the name of the Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. God is good and he's most reliable. He has promised never to leave you nor forsake you and he has also promised to help you in all areas of your life and even concerning your family. God will sustain you. He will watch over you. It will bring you to your place of glory, to a place of peace, and to a place of overflowing abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. In this season of your life, amen, God will, you know, it will cause you to receive a divine touch that will propel you, amen, to be the very best in all your endeavors. And as the Lord leaves, you will be a shining star in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare over you, this season, you are favored, you are protected, you are, and you are positioned for an extraordinary blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. I say to you, dearly beloved, fear not, fear not, fear not. I say to you, fear not, for the Lord is working on your behalf and he will give you victory over all your challenges, every single one of them, it will give you victory over them and your joy will be full in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Let me warmly welcome you to today's online Digging Deep service. Amen. Where we dig into the word of God and as we continue in part four of the theme, God's light and the appointed time, God's light will shine upon you. Amen. This season will be your appointed time. Your appointed time for glory, your appointed time for a blessing, your appointed time for that which God has prepared, that your glory will manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Our anchor scripture for tonight is taken from Romans chapter 12 from verse 19 to 21. Romans chapter 12 verse 19, 20 and 21. The word of God says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. He says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for another glorious opportunity to come before you tonight 
Amen. We ask, O oh Lord God, that you will be with us as we connect from our various locations. Let your word do us good in the name of Jesus. Lord, the word that we come for tonight, let it empower us, let it bless us, let it help us, and let it transform us. So that at the end of it all, Lord, we will have located our appointed time, we will have entered into our place of glory, and only your name will be exalted. Let it be so, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight, as we continue in part four of the series, God's light and the appointed, sorry, in part three, but continue in part three, amen. God's light and the appointed time, amen. I will uh, just quickly do a summary from where we started off, amen. We started by um, introducing what God's light is, and we said God, you know, commanded this light to shine out of darkness so that God's light is a revealer. God's light brings progress and growth. God's light exposes wickedness and evil. Amen. God's light brings speed. Where the light of God is, there is speed. Amen. God's light brings truth and wisdom. We also say that an appointed time is a prepared time arranged for you. An appointed time means that God will give his attention. Is is a time where attention is organized for you. A specific position is prepared and handed over to you. You know, you are chosen for a particular job or a task. We said these are all what we what, what we can define as an appointed time. We also mentioned that God's appointed time is in two folds. Amen. Is in two folds. For the recipients in one fold, it is your time for his attention and favor. While for your enemies on the, on the other hand, amen, it is a set time for their destruction. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. We looked at the encounter of uh, Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 1 to 11. 2 Kings 5 verse 1 to 11. We looked at how his maidservant captured from Israel was instrumental to his appointed time in receiving permanent healing of his leprosy. We concluded by highlighting that there are some lessons we can learn. Amen. If we as a people or we as individuals are going to also experience our own appointed time. Amen. And some of the lessons that we, you know, we looked at is number one, that we must let the light of God shine in our lives. Amen. So number one is let the light of God shine in you. In other words, let the word of God come alive. Let the, um, the contact of the Holy Spirit, let it flow in your life. Let it be a renewing of your mind. Just let the word of God flow. Amen. So that the light of God can actually shine in your life. We said that we must be humble enough to listen to those who are placed in our life. You know, you must be humble enough to listen to those who are placed in your life. They are not there for um, decoration or by accident. They are actually placed there to perhaps help you to discover what God has put in your path. So that you must be sensitive to God's leading. Amen. You must be ready to obey God's instruction. Praise the name of the Lord. And never take for granted opportunities before you. So these are some of the things that we can um, learn from the story of Naaman. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Last week, the focus was on the benefits of God's appointed time. That was the focus of last week. Amen. When we continue in part two of God's light and the appointed time. We're able to reveal that the one who experiences God's appointed time will enjoy the following. Amen? And what are the following? A few of them, maybe four or five of them. We said number one, God arises for you. Amen? Number two, you receive God's mercy, which will ensure that all things will work in your favor. We said number three is that 
Because God's mercy is released on you, it becomes your set time to enjoy unprecedented favor. Praise the name of the Lord. That things which were not working before, amen, or things that you were looking up to, hoping that one day will happen, it will suddenly, amen, begin to happen for you. Why? Because it is your set time of favor. Then, number four, what we can experience for the one who is enjoying um, God's set time, amen, is that you will enter into your prepared place of glory. Because every one of us, we have a prepared place of glory. We have somewhere that God has prepared for us. We have a place where our blessings are lying. We have a place where our relevance will be felt, our impact, our sphere of influence. There's somewhere that God has prepared for us. So these are few of the things that you will experience when it is your set time of glory. We went further to list some of the benefits, amen, of God's appointed time. Some of the benefits. And we talked about about five of those benefits. There are many, but we just looked at five of them. I will say number one, when um, the benefits of God's appointed time, when you begin to experience it, number one, you are remembered for blessing. That's number one. You are remembered. All of a sudden, the book of remembrance will be open for you. You will be remembered for blessing. Amen? Number two, God's promises for you will suddenly be established. All the prophecies and the good prophets, uh, promises that uh, God has released unto you that you have been waiting on, year one, year two, you know, prophecies of the year, the word of God that you got, it will begin to be established. Amen? Then another benefit that you can enjoy when it's your appointed time is that you will enjoy divine support. Amen? The heavens will be there to back you up, to favor you, to help you. Amen? We also say that it will be a time for your breakthrough. It will be a time for your breakthrough. And I pray this season will be a time for your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Say that you will be transformed. Amen? To become extraordinary. You won't be ordinary anymore. You will move into the sphere of extraordinary. You'll be transformed to become extraordinary. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. So as we continue tonight, amen, in part three, the focus will be on the appointed time of your enemies. That's what we're going to look at or we're going to spend the remaining 15 minutes there about discussing the appointed time of your enemies. Recall, that when we're talking about appointed time, we said it's in two folds. Amen. For you, or uh, for you who is the recipient of God's attention and favor, it will be a season of remembrance. Amen. For your great blessings. It will be a season where you'll be established in the glory that God has prepared for you. It will be a season where God will pay you attention. The heavens will be focused on you. You will hear the word of God. You will get the backing of divine support. Amen. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. But on the other hand, at the same time, the appointed time is also an appointed time for your enemies. It will be an appointed time for them to be judged and to be disgraced. It will be an appointed time for your enemies to be judged and to be disgraced. So this season, God will arise for you in the name of Jesus. He will defeat all your enemies and pull them to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, in our anchor scripture where we read in Romans chapter 12, verse 19 to 21, God admonishes us not to avenge ourselves. Amen? But rather we should leave the vengeance to him. Because God has an appointed time to serve the enemies of your life, his own judgment. There's an appointed time. Amen. And when you are enjoying your own appointed time, the enemies too will receive a visitation from God to deal with them, to silence them, and to destroy them so that you can be free to enjoy all that God has destined for you. 
praise the mighty name of the Lord. The enemies, they always appear to be celebrating. Amen? You know, when you are experiencing a little setback, you know, when there's a little challenge, the enemy is always rejoicing. They are celebrating. Amen? Because they think that they are winning. They think that they are making progress over your life. They think that they are triumphing. Little do they know that God is watching and will surely approve them in his own perfect time. So I pray for you again that this season, God will uproot every of your enemy. And anywhere they have gathered against you, God will destroy them, scatter them. They will not be able to gather again and they will be silenced forever for your sake in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 34 verse 8, Isaiah 34 and verse 8, it says, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. A day is coming. Amen. And now is the day when God will arise and take vengeance on your cause and every of your enemies, whether known or unknown, will be silenced forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 4. Isaiah 35 and verse 4. It says, Say to those who are fearful or who are fearful hearted. It says, Be strong and do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. That will be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 94 and verse 1. Psalm 94 verse 1. It says, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. O God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine forth. Amen. God will shine forth in your situation. He will avenge for you. He will reward all those enemies that have done those against you. He will put them to shame. They think that they are triumphant. Little do they know. That their graves have been prepared. Their gallows for where they will be hung has been prepared. And God will strike them down in this season of your appointed time in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 58 and verse 10. Psalm 58 verse 10. It says the righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. Amen. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Everyone that gathers together in wickedness against you, your family, your business, everything has to do with you. God will arise for you and he will strike them down. His vengeance will visit them and the wrath of God, they will taste of it and whenever they see you, they will run and flee because of what God would have shown them that he is the Lord of us. So the end of your enemy is at hand. And you shall rejoice because God will judge them. He will vindicate you and he will set you free from all the manipulations and the oppressions of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So quickly, let us all, should I say, let me examine or let us examine some examples of how God appointed time came upon those who thought that they had triumphed as enemies. Let's look at some examples. Number one, Samson. Samson. In Judges chapter 16, verse 1 to 22. Judges 16, verse 1 to 22. He was dangerously exposed to the enemy. And the enemy was Delilah. Amen. Delilah was an enemy within his own territory, planted there to pull him down. Although Samson had so many flaws, as you know, he was toying with the secrets to his success and power on the altar of love, because he claimed to love this so-called lady Delilah. So he loved her. Amen. But in the process of all that, Delilah was the enemy that the enemy had planted within. He finally gave in to the demands of Delilah, who kept on pressing him. Kept on pressing Samson. Show me the source of your power. Show me the source of your power. Even after Samson had, you know, lied, you know, with the intention of deceiving her, amen, 
Delilah will invite the Philistines into um, Samson, bind him in trying to capture him. And, you know, he, he didn't do anything about Delilah. He kept on playing around with her, playing around her, until finally Delilah destroyed him. Samson was captured by the Philistines, got his eyes plucked out, and he was in the enemy's camp grinding corn. The enemies had captured him. And I can tell you, the enemies were rejoicing. At this stage, there was celebration in the camp of the enemy. Oh, we have finally captured our enemy, Samson. They were rejoicing that they had captured and put Samson in bondage and his destiny was completely over. But just like some people are experiencing some challenges, the enemy may appear to be rejoicing over you and they are thinking they have concluded your matter. Amen? They have placed you in bondage and your bondage is total. Amen? But in Judges chapter 16, verse 23 and 24, Judges 16, 23 and 24, it says, Now the lords of the Philistines gather together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to rejoice, as they said, our God has delivered into our hands something, our enemy. When the people saw him, they praised their gods. And they said, our God has delivered into our hands our enemy, the destroyer of our land, and the one who multiplied our debts. They were rejoicing. Little did they know, little did they know, that the appointed time for God's judgment was already at hand. Right there where they were rejoicing, they were making merry, they were praising their God, they were eating, they were dancing. Right there, Samson's hair had begun to grow again. And Samson found a way by the help of one of them because he knows his eyes were plucked out. So he found a way to the pillars supporting the temple. And he pulled the whole house down. The house collapsed and even though Samson died with them, but it was judgment day for all the enemies of the Lord. Judges chapter 16, verse 25 to 30. Their appointed time for judgment came upon them at the time when they thought they were rejoicing. They didn't know that the appointed time had come. I pray for someone tonight. For In fact, for every one of you, every gathering of evil concluded against you and your family. They shall receive the vengeance of God Almighty right now and none of your enemies shall survive the wrath of God in the name of Jesus. Everywhere the enemy has thought that they have captured you, they have held you bound or they have held you bound. They've destroyed every atom of peace, of progress, of prosperity concerning your life and they are rejoicing. God's appointed time for judgment will fall upon them right now and they will be destroyed they will be scattered. They will be silent. Never ever to arise and gather against you again in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be free from every enemy of your life in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Another example that we can look at quickly. We still have a few, a few more um, time. Is Mordecai in Esther chapter 7 verse 1 to 10. Mordecai in Esther 7 verse 1 to 10. You see... They were, it was primed and arranged, amen, to, to, you know, Mordecai was arranged by Haman to be hung on a gallows that he had prepared. Amen. Queen Esther had found favor with the king, you know, and, you know, King Ahasuerus had called her to a banquet, you know, they had dinner together. They were just, you know, having fun. And this Haman was even there with them. They were all together. And that's when Esther asked the question. In fact, the king was the one who said, what can I do for you, my queen? And Esther asked a favor. Now look, my people have been primed to be destroyed, to be sold to save me, to be... And the king was wondering, wow, what is, what is that? How, what's going on? And there and then, Haman had plotted to take out everyone. Mordecai refused to pay homage to him. And they had gone ahead to build a gallows that he will use to hang Mordecai because he was planning to set Mordecai up. At that time, Haman was already rejoicing that you, he refused to pay homage to me, you 
and all your people, you are gone. You are going to be that. In fact, when I do it, I'm going to, we are going to pay money into the king's account. We are going to do this. We are going to do that. They were, he was already rejoicing that he had finished it. That even where he was planning to destroy Mordecai, Mordecai cannot even get to that place. So he won't be able to defend himself anyway. But his appointed time for God's judgment had already come upon him. You know, because by the time Esther had made a request, the king was saying, who can't do such a thing? And he said, it's Haman. What? He got angry. He walked out. He went to the garden, maybe just to get some fresh air. And by the time he had left, this same Haman was already on his knees, prostrating, you know, pleading with uh, Queen Esther, please save me from the hands of the king. When the king came back, what he was seeing was different from what Haman was doing. He was even looking at him and ah, you are even harassing my own queen right in my presence. He said, this man must be killed. And one of the eunuchs said, ah, there's a gallow in his house that he has prepared. They said, go and hang him on that gallow. And, Mordi and Haman was gone. Mordecai was set free. In fact, when you read the verses, maybe from, I think, verse 5, chapter 5 and chapter 6, you will see that um, Mordecai was already honored. The book of remembrance was already opened for Mordecai. Amen? And everything turned around. The enemy that was thinking they had captured and finished Mordecai and all the Jews, everything turned around on his head. Amen? And that is would be the same portion of all your enemies who think that they will triumph over you. God used the same judgment that Haman had prepared to kill uh, Mordecai, to destroy him through Esther, who God used to save the Jews. Amen? Every evil plot of deaths, destruction, and calamity that the enemy has planted for you and members of your family, your household. Amen? In this season, it will be a complete turnaround and it will be for their own downfall in the mighty name of Jesus. Your enemies will fall into the same pit that they dug for you. It might be in your place of work. It might be when you are doing your business. It might even be in your family. It can be in the church of God. Wherever the gathering of the enemy is against you, against your family members, this season, all the plans, the plottings that the enemy has put together to cause mayhem, to cause calamity, to cause problems, to cause you to sorrow, to weep, to cry, to cause losses for you. Those Plans will turn around upon their heads and they will be the recipients. In fact, they will receive it with double portion fire in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, many of us Christians, we play with the enemy. We joke with them. Oh, we put them, we play around them, we kiss God. That's what Samson was doing. He was playing with the lie lie. Oh, I love you. I love you. You know, you cannot do anything to me. I'm the strongest man. I was anointed from my mother's womb. You know, I'm a Nazarite. I'm heavily anointed. He was playing with the enemy. If he had dealt with the enemy at the time when he discovered that this same Delilah was enemy within, he wouldn't have ended up that way. So that's why I'm praying for you. Every enemy of your life, I'm not going to pray any repent. They will die for your sake. In the name of Jesus. Before they will get to kill you, they will die. They beat the dog for you. They will fall into that pit. They will be disgraced. They will never be able to arise again in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Let's take one more before we round up for tonight. That is number three. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 1 all the way to verse 51. 1 Samuel 17 verse 1 to 51. Goliath tormented Israel day and night for 40 days. What was he doing? He was asking, send, you know, send someone to come out to fight with me. If the fellow can win me, we will become the slaves to Israel. If I defeat the fellow, Israel will become slaves to the Philistines. And the armies of Israel were dreadfully afraid. That's what the scripture says. The enemy was having a few days and they believed that they had triumphed. In fact, I can just imagine all the other soldiers, they would just be sitting there drinking, making merry. Goliath, tell them again. Tell them again. And they were thinking that, look, 
if they continue like this up to a certain stage, nobody comes, then <laughs> they are one. And the whole of Israel with their king will all of a sudden become their slave. So they were waiting for the day. You know, they were celebrating ahead of the day because they thought they were triumphing. Perhaps they would have been thinking if they cannot fight Goliath, then they will eventually submit themselves unto Goliath. That was the thinking of the armies of Israel. Little did they know that the appointed time of God's judgment was already at hand. The appointed time for God to judge, to disgrace, to silence them forever was already at hand. Now, David was sent to go to the battlefront and you know, give his brothers food because they were at the war front. Amen? And to cut the long story short, he opted to fight the uncircumcised Philistine. And he knew that God would deliver him into his hand and the appointed time for the judgment of God to come upon the Philistines and their so-called giant Goliath was already at hand. First Samuel 17, 46 and 47. First Samuel 17, 46 and 47. He says, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. That's David speaking. He says, and I will strike you and take your head from you. He said, and this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there's a God in Israel. What God is going to do for you, all the earth will know that you are serving a living God. By the time God will deal with the enemies that are troubling your life, troubling your finance, troubling your business, troubling your health, troubling your place of work, your children, your family, they will know that you are serving a living God. He says then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. Amen. I pray for you. Every battle challenge that you are going through. You see, some of us may be going through some challenges. You cannot even explain it. You are working so hard, and it's like the enemy is just sucking out life from you. You cannot understand how your finances are going down. You make some money. There's always one trouble. There's always one calamity that is coming your way. The enemy is just on rampage. And they are rejoicing. They are celebrating. They are making merry. Not knowing that their heads are about to be cut off. As the Lord lives, every of your enemy, their heads will be cut off in the mighty name of Jesus. Just at the time when the enemy thought they had obtained victory over, over the Israel, Goliath was killed by David. And the host of the Philistines, they fled. Because they knew it was over for them. This season, what God will do to your enemies will cause every other intending enemy to see you and flee. Amen? Because they know that there's a God that is fighting for you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Every giant in your life and destiny that has been tormenting you, they shall fall for your sake, never ever to arise again. In the mighty name of Jesus. So my dearly beloved brethren. In conclusion tonight. The appointed time is in two folds. For you. God will remember you. For your great blessings. Amen. God will remember you. For your promotion. God will remember you. For the appointed time. To place you. In the place of glory. He has prepared for you. But at the same time. God will remember all your enemies. To release his judgment upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. The enemies always believe that they are having an upper hand. That's what they always believe. They forget that once God is for you, no one can be against you. God will frustrate, silence, and defeat every of your enemy in the name of Jesus. Beloved, I will leave you with this. To live a life of victory over the enemy, God must be on your side. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans 8, 31. He says, what shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? If God is for you, no enemy, even if they appear to be triumphing, amen, God will frustrate them, scatter them once he arises for your sake. Amen? And his mercy locates you. 
all your enemies will be scattered. It will be your set time for favor and your favor will unleash the blessings, the glory, the increase, the abundant life that God had prepared for you. It is your season. Amen. It is your season for great turnaround. It is for this reason I make a solemn call to you. If God is not on your side, the enemy will triumph over you. You must therefore let God be on your side. The good thing is that he can be on your side right now. Amen. If you allow him to come in because he stands at the door of your heart and is knocking. Amen. If you will open for him to come in, it will turn things around and your life will be a life of a victorious one. It will settle you and make you shine as light in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to lead you in prayer if you want to make that decision. You want to say, Father, come in and turn things around. Let me begin to enjoy the victory that you have proposed, that you have wrought, the victory that you have made on the cross of Calvary. Let me also begin to enjoy it so that my life can have a meaning, so that my life can, you know, be a life of that those who are victorious, so that the light of God can shine in my life. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to lead you in a very short prayer, but if you believe and you confess with your mouth, then your life will have a new meaning. So you just say, Father, I come to you just as I am, and I ask, O oh Lord, that you have mercy upon me. Wash me clean in your blood. I confess that I'm a sinner. In fact, it was in sin that my mother conceived me. But today, I repent of all my sin. I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. Pray and tell him that, Father, please write my name in the book of life. I'm beginning from right now. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. And Lord, every enemy of my life, the ones I know, the ones I don't know, arise for me. Let your appointed time come upon them, judge them, scatter them, destroy them, and let them never arise again in the name of Jesus. So shall it be for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You pray that prayer, you can reach out to us. We'll tell you more that you need to do so that your mind can also be transformed in accordance with the will and purpose of God for you. Praise the name of the Lord. So as we draw up as we call it a wrap for tonight please i invite you to join me as we round off with a few prayers father we want to raise our voices in appreciation and thanksgiving to you for another glorious time in your presence tonight we ask that you accept our thanks in the name of jesus christ father we ask that your unending support protection and favor over all our lives and our families will be released upon us afresh even right now in the mighty name of jesus father we ask that you arise amen arise for us and destroy all enemies of our lives in the mighty name of jesus let their appointed time for judgment come right now in the name of jesus christ we say everywhere that the enemy may have had advantage over me, over us, and our family members. Let there be a complete turnaround in our favor, in the mighty name of Jesus, and make all their activities to of no effect over our lives in the name of Jesus. I command every wicked arrow of evil shot against us. Lord, I command it to go back to sender by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every enchantment and divination Against us, let it be blotted out by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. And every garment of shame and sorrow, amen, that the enemy has prepared for you and for your family, it's the enemy himself that will wear that garment and you shall be set free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree over every one of us, God shall arise for us and show us his mercy. And it will cause our set time of favor to be now in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be for every one of us in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the name of the Lord.
Thank you for being a part of the broadcast tonight. I want to assure you that your set time, your appointed time is now. And at the same time, every enemy of your life, you know, those enemies that have been celebrating over you, they think they've gotten you down. They've crippled you. They've attacked your finance. They've attacked your spouse. They've, they've done something to your children. Your place of work is shaking. Your business is not stable. And they are rejoicing over you. I can tell you that God's judgment is coming upon them. And they will be so destroyed that they will not even remember that you exist. And you'll be set free in the name of Jesus. God will arise for you. He will give you his favor. He will pay you full attention. It will cause this season to be your set time of favor. And at the same time, it will destroy every enemy of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You are coming out stronger. You are coming out better. There will be a recovery of everything that the enemy has touched in your life. You see, when the enemy touches things, it scatters them. But because God is remembering you for favor, everything that the enemy has touched, he has scattered, he has disorganized, God will rearrange them and restore unto you in this season concerning you, your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. You are moving forward. You will be unstoppable and great shall be your joy in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be for you. This is your set time of favor. Amen. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Once again, I appreciate you for joining us. Please I solicit that you like, you share the video so that people will hear the word of God. They will be set free and the enemy will fall for their sake in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a very good evening. Shalom.